had an absolutely stunning trip to the Republic of Ireland. This is the video. I hope you enjoy it. What an incredible place to travel to go spearfishing. Somewhere where not that many people spearfish, mostly Eastern Europeans, but it's supposed to be pretty good, so let's, uh, let's see what's out here. Started out in this deep area of boulders, hoping really for a trigger fish. I know they're about off island, the water's a bit warmer than it is off Wales, but they're not about, so quickly I went back to a speto. A bit barren to start with, but I did spook a fairly decent pollock. You can see it just swimming off here. You know, just swam too far away, dropped down to the boulders again, a good pollock, cruised through the gully, but took the shot, got a nice spine shot in there. And uh, it was a pretty good fish to start with, you know, I was very happy with that, and really hoping for something a bit bigger than this. Now, there was a lot of algae bloom at this mark. It was strange because it was absolutely flat calm, no wind at all, but you do seem to get a lot of swell in Ireland, probably because the Atlantic just kind of rolling in, there's a lot of fetch for that swell to build up. And you can see here, just large numbers of pollock, you know, these are about kind of two pound fish, not worth taking one of these because you're just going to end up spooking one of the bigger ones. Now, I had some real problems with my safety catch on this trip. I'm a big advocate of safety catching on spear guns, I like having one, but my safety repeatedly jammed up on this strip and you can see here a very nice pollock coming in absolutely point blank range safety jams you know the pollock's a bit further away and in the bloom i miss the next dive though i made up for it i dropped down to a much deeper area there's about 15 meters and it was absolutely amazing just watching these pollocks just moving through the kelp you know this very tall quite sparse kelp seems to hold a lot of them you know, these are quite decent fish. I say decent fish, they're two to three pound fish. They're not massive. Um, but I just waited a bit, hoping for a bigger one to appear in the background. And there were really large numbers on this dive. But unfortunately, the current was running quite hard above and I was unable to find this exact spot again. This was the spot at this mark that just held all of the fish. And possibly what I should have done is unclipped my float from the gun and dropped uh, a weight down. Anyway, managed to take a fish, which was uh, which was quite nice. Now the algae bloom seemed very patchy here. So you can see the previous dive, that's probably about 20 meters away from where I'm diving now. And here the viz is only sort of two to three meters. So it was very difficult to size up any of these fish. And uh, you'll see here, I had another problem with my safety catch. Quite a large fish comes in and uh, at point blank range, I try to shoot it and the safety jams up again. But uh, fortunately this time the fish didn't spook too much, probably just didn't see me. I was able to take the shot and nail it. This is seriously good. So many fish, exactly where I thought they'd be. So just sit here off the headland, uh, just basically waiting for bait fish to come round. Wasn't quite as big as the first one, but it was a really beautiful color on this fish. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Now, one of the things that I'm a really big advocate of is carrying water with you when you're spear fishing. The pressure of diving forces more urea into your kidneys and you're going to need to piss a lot more than you normally would. So it's so important to stay hydrated. And coming out from this dive, you know, it was nice to get three good pollock. First time in Ireland, very happy with that. And it was just a really cool feeling just in that evening gloom coming out of the sea with some nice fish. Now the next day, I headed to an area that looked amazing on the charts, but the swell was absolutely insane. I planned on swimming about a kilometer and a half out to the headland, you can see there, but I couldn't even reach it. You know, the current was so bad, I, I couldn't even get there. Conditions were quite poor, but I did manage to shoot an absolute beast of a pollock, which I didn't film. I'd basically given up by that point, and I shot this in four meters of water, shallowest dive of the day. Now, I moved locations by uh, about sort of three hours and driving an island can be quite difficult. I got stuck for over an hour because there were cows all over the road. Uh, it was quite funny but also annoying because I was going to miss the low tide window I'd, I'd hoped to dive. Um, but Irish radio played absolute bangers as always so it was a, a fun drive to the mark. Now I hit this quite remote headland and my plan was to start out in the gap between the headland and the island hoping that the current pushing through there would push fish through. The first dive, 
theory was proved correct. Large numbers of bass and mullet were moving in, and you'll actually see quite shortly a shoal of sand eel being corralled into the shallows by the bass. <laughs> There they go, the bass just sort of herding them into the shallows, and I wait till I'm absolutely point blank, can't miss, and stole a nice fish. There's a pleasant start, and it was time to, to try and get another one. You know, there were obviously large numbers of fish around, I was very, very happy with that. You know, first drop, taking that a new mark. Now, something I've been working on my spear fishing is making better use of cover. If you can see here that I'm not getting quite as good a view, but the fish can't see me because that's stringweed. And again here, you see there's some stringweed in front of me. The fish do seem to come a lot closer when you're in cover. And I wait and wait and wait for a decent fish and take the biggest one in the shoal. Uh, it's a pretty nice fish. Not massive, sort of mid you know, 55 centimetres or so, but a huge mouth on it. And I do love the way that, that bass look. They're such an exciting species to hunt just because of how they move. Now one point that's worth mentioning is just how close you can let these fish come. You can see this bass here being shot. The spear has not left the gun by the time it hits the bass. It really is worth waiting those extra few seconds for a point blank shot. Now with two bass on the stringer, it's time to go and hunt some, some mullets. The catch limits and minimum sizes are exactly the same in the Republic of Ireland as they are in uh, the UK. And I believe it's actually the same throughout the European Union as well. Now, whilst mullets seem pretty prolific in Ireland, I couldn't find any. Although the, the terrain seemed quite good, I managed to see this one that turned up behind me, didn't get a shot, so I headed to some much deeper areas. Now, I'd looked on the charts, and this area dropped off uh, down to over 20 metres, and very vertically, I was hoping for pollock. So, to dive a bit deeper, I ditched my weight vest, and I jettisoned three and a half kilos of weight, and uh, good drink as well very important to stay hydrated on these deeper dives and I dropped in to about 19 meters now the bottom was actually even deeper but I really wasn't feeling a, a 24 25 meter drop uh, it's a bit deeper than I'd really be comfortable going and um, there just really weren't any fish this dogfish came unbelievably close which was quite cool <laughs> but apart from that there were no fish in the, the deep sections so I looked for some pollock in a slightly shallower <laughs> section this is about nine meters and there were quite a lot of fish about but none of them were of a size where it was worth putting the trigger yeah so I just decided to, to have a look for some some more mullet in the shallows again now the swell in Ireland is really interesting because even on calm days there's an absolutely windless day you still often get a four or five foot swell. And I'm sure that is because there's so much distance for the swell to build up over. Even the sort of slightest wind can cause it, and there can be strong winds offshore as well. I'm sure that, that affects it all too. Um, so I got out here to, to go to the toilet, and you can see just how bad the swell is. Absolutely no wind, and you know, pretty extreme swell. It actually felt a bit dangerous getting out here. Maybe it wasn't the best place to do it, uh, but very nice to pick up two good fish and then move on to a different mark now at this next mark i actually had a bit of a mare i wasn't diving very well it's a shame because there are a lot of fish about you can just see how many mullet there are here these are all a bit small unfortunately um so after seeing those mullet i looked in the shallows saw an imprint of a flounder and shortly afterwards found a nice flounder now see if you can see it before i shoot it because the only thing visible of this flounder are the two eyes poking up above the sand very cool to find this one and then I found a nice uh, brown crab this was particularly good to get because where I live in North Wales there aren't a lot of brown crabs it's mostly lobster um, but Ireland and Cornwall and Scotland seem to have a lot more brown crabs it's always always good to get some Now these crabs are <laughs> unbelievably strong. This isn't a particularly big one, it's only just in size, but they probably still do quite a nasty injury to your finger, so it's important to get it in the catch pack as soon as possible. Now, again, problems with the safety catch. Jams up, can't get it off, missed out on a good fish. And then you can see here just sort of schooly bass everywhere, but they all appear behind me. And because I'm uh, on a blank, 
with the bass at the moment on this trip. I decided to have a shot at one, but I'm shooting from a horrible twisted position right behind me. And it will so often just kind of pull your gun offline and miss the fish. Again, I'm shooting at a bass that's admittedly very close from a twisted position. Very, very hard to shoot from a twisted, unnatural feeling position. And you can see again here, I'm having to twist quite substantially to try and shoot these fish. And the kelp actually gets in the way of my gun. I couldn't track onto the fish because it got stuck in the kelp. And you can see yet another fish missed here. You know, I was having a, an absolute shocker, to be honest. But managed to come out of the water with some fish. Uh, the bass isn't mine, that's someone else's, but the others were. On my final day, I hit a really, really cool mark. But the swell was unreal. I had about a, a, a 10 knot onshore wind. And at many marks, that's fine. You can see here it's pretty bad. This is the area I targeted. I was hoping there'd be some fish sort of almost hold up between the boulders, and I wasn't wrong. You can see here a bass just between those boulders. I missed this one, and immediately afterwards, four bass cruised through. Two of those are pretty big. Then I was reloading the gun, and again here, another bass between the boulders. I take a snapshot, and somehow managed to stone a fish I could, I could barely see. It was probably more luck than judgment if i'm honest here and it wasn't a massive fish but it was nice to to get off the blank and take something i think when you're diving in a swell like this it's not very nice to dive and i felt pretty sick actually my breath hold time was right down my dive times were only about one minute and uh, they're normally a lot longer but it's really important not to give up because the fish don't mind the swell you just got to keep on going um because there will be fish there and you know, lo and behold, right at the end of my breath hold, a few mullet come through and I managed to take one. Again, not a massive fish, but getting anything in those sort of conditions felt good. Now I moved on to a slightly different area. I was hoping that some of these large rocks would hold kind of pockets of slack water behind them. This is it viewed from the cliff top after the dive. And you know, I wasn't wrong. Some bass just uh, cruised through in a minute after this clip. Just look at how bad the uh, the swell is though even behind that rock it was absolutely atrocious and um, but the fish were present they certainly don't mind it now this is a slightly better fish not a massive one you know sort of a three pound bass and um, but in those sort of conditions it was just good to pick up anything very happy with my catch that was a, a really tough session uh, just to get out there and, and give it a go anyway i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel it really helps me out until then enjoy your diving and i'll see you in the next video